Hello guys, good day to all of you. Uh, this is Brian Santos, an environmental science student from PSU Binmali campus. So this time I will present my laboratory activity number one entitled a monitoring plan on water quality and quantity of Laguna Lake. First question, why monitoring of water quality is important? Cite an example to support your answer. So, water quality monitoring is important for environmental protection, managing waterways in their catchment, identifying pollution events and community education. Monitoring consists of making observations and taking measurements that are Analyze and clear purpose for monitoring is the first and most critical step for an effective monitoring program and should be based on an analysis of issues affecting the catchment and or water body. As awareness of land use changes and their impact on water quality has grown, there has been a corresponding growth in community participation in water quality monitoring and local action to protect local environments. Where the purpose of monitoring is to provide data for local, local action planning or catchment-wide decision making. It is important that the monitoring provides data of a of known quality. It is essential that we know how good the data are if we are going to make good catchment, management decision or develop meaningful resource conditions target. In addition, water quality or WQM provides an understanding of water quality conditions in national stream, rivers, groundwater and aquatic system. How those conditions vary lo locally, regionally, and nationally. Weather conditions are changing over time. How natural features and human activities affect those conditions. And lastly, where those effects are most pronounced. For the second question, po. So, why there is a need for a, a monitoring flood? What is its main purpose? Traditionally, the principal reason for monitoring water quality has been the need to verify whether observed water quality is suitable for intended uses. Monitoring has evolved over time. However, and the main objective of this monitoring plan is as follows. First, to enable assessment of the current state of water quantity and quantity in its variability in space and time. Often, such assessments are appraisal of the hydrological, morphological, physical, chemical, biological, and or microbiological conditions in relation to reference conditions, human health effects, and or the existing or planned uses of water. Such reference conditions may take into account elevated concentrations of specific parameters due to natural, geographic, and geo chemical processes. Second, to identify specific parameters to be analyzed under this plan. And lastly, to assess the fitness of water for different uses. For the last question, the last but not the least, what are the parameters used in monitoring water quality? Explain its function and its importance in monitoring aspect. So, there are three types of parameters used in monitoring water quality. And these are the physical chemical parameters, biological parameters, and microbiological parameters. Under the physical chemical parameters, we have 17 different parameters and these are the following. First, we have the alkalinity. Alkalinity is a measure of water's capacity to neutralize acids and bases, thereby maintaining a fairly stable of pH. It is also referred to as the acid neutralizing capacity and sometimes the buffering capacity. Alkalinity of natural waters is due primarily to the presence of weak acids, such as also, although strong bases may also contribute in extreme environments. Alkalinity is reported as microgram per liter, CaCO3, or stands, up, stands as uh, calcium carbonate, since most alkalinity is derived from the weathering of carbonate mineral, minerals. Alkalinity in natural levels is beneficial to all organizations that depends on, on water because it helps prevent acidic water by resisting a change in pH, pH that is harmful to humans 
wildlife and aquatic organisms. For protection of aquatic life, the buffering capacity should be at least 20 microgram per liter of calcium carbonate. If alkalinity is naturally low or less than 20 microgram per liter, there can be no longer than a 25% reduction in alkalinity. By maintaining at least 20 microgram per liter of calcium carbonate, the buffering system of water is preserved which is an important factor to aquatic life since fluctuation of, P of the pH is prevented. Second, we have ammonia. Ammonia is a colorless gas with irritating odor. In unpolluted water, trace amounts of ammonia are present from the reduction of atmospheric nitrogen by aquatic may microorganisms. Ammonia can be produced naturally from the breakdown of organic matter in its excreted by fish as a nitrogenous waste product. In fish, ammonia is a byproduct of pr protein metabolism and is primarily excreted across the, the gill membranes with a small amount excreted in the urine. Ammonia is a toxic compound that can be adversely affect fish health. When dissolved in surface water, ammonia exists in two forms, NH3 or the anionized and NH4 positive or deionized. Third, we have biochemical oxygen demand. Biological oxygen demand or the BOD is the amount of oxygen required by microorganisms for stabilizing biologically decomposed possible organic matter or the carbonaceous in water under aerobic conditions. But this is used to determine the polluted the pollution load of wastewater. The degree of pollution and the efficiency of wastewater treatment methods uh, then BOD5 is calculated by measuring the amount of dissolved oxygen in a water sample when it is collected. Then keeping the sample of 20 degrees Celsius for 5 days and measuring dissolved oxygen again. So, fourth, we have calcium hardness. Calcium hardness is caused by the presence of calcium ions in the water. The presence of calcium in water results from passage through of over deposits of limestones, dolomite, gypsum, and such other calcium bearing rocks. Calcium contributes to the total hardness of water in, 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 in and an important micronutrients in aquatic environment needed in large quantities by mollusks and vertebrates. It is measured by ETA titrimetric method and the results of the analysis is reported in microgram calcium carbonate per liter. A small concentration of calcium carbonate prevents corrosion of metal pipes by laying down a protective coating. Calcium salts can, can also be readily precipitated from water in high levels of calcium hardness tends to promote scale formation in the water system. Number 5. We have chemical oxygen demand. The COD or the chemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen which is needed for the oxidation of all organic substances in water in microgram per liter or gram uh, meter to the tree. It is measured by dichromate reflux method. The intrinsic limitation of the test lies in its ability to differentiate between the biologically oxidizable and inert materials. The main use of COD as an indicator of the organic and inorganic matter within water and effluent discharge is it provides information of the quantity of oxygen required to completely oxidize both the organic and inorganic materials present in water. Number six, we have chloride. Chloride. In the form of chloride, negative ion is one of the major inorganic and ions or negative ions in salt water and fresh water. It originates from the desiccation of salts such as sodium chloride or calcium chloride in water. These salts as, and their resulting chloride ions originate from natural minerals, salt waters, intrusion in industrial pollution. Number seven, we have dissolved oxygen. Aquatic organisms require oxygen in the 
free elemental state as a dissolved gas. The amount of dissolved oxygen or the DO in the water is fundamental to the survival of most aquatic organisms. Lack of significant levels of dissolved oxygen required by most aquatic organisms for respiration can cause impairment or death. The two main sources of dissolved oxygen are diffusion of oxygen from the air and photosynthetic activity. Oxygen is soluble in water and oxygen that is dissolved in water will equilibrate with the oxygen in atmosphere. Oxygen tends to be less soluble as temperature increases. Diffusion of oxygen from the air into water depends on the solubility of oxygen and is influenced by many other factors like water movements, temperature, salinity, and etc. Photosynthesis of aquatic plants will increase the DO during daylight, daylight hours and DO levels will fall during the nighttime hours. Number 8. We have inorganic phosphate. Phosphorus is an essential nutrient for aquatic life. It occurs naturally in the environment in small amounts. Phosphorus is often the growth limiting factor for plants as high levels can lead to algal blooms and excessive nutrients in the water. Phosphorus occurs in several forms, both inorganic and organic. Common sources of phosphorus include agricultural runoff, animal waste and sewage that contains organic phosphorus as well as inorganic phosphorus in products such as detergent. And number 9, we have nitrate. When we say nitrate, uh, nitrates are the most oxidized forms of nitrogen and the end products of aerobic decomposition of organic nitrogen matter. matter. It commonly occurs in small amounts in surface waters. Nitrates are essential plant nutrients, but in excess amounts, they can cause significant water quality problems. Number 10, we have oil and grease. Oil and grease is a mixture of variety of substances including fuels, motor oils, rubricating oil, hydraulic oil, cooking oil, and animal derived fats. The concentration of these substances is typically measured within a body of water. Lakes, rivers, storms, storm water runoff, and wastewater are all monitored for oil and grease. Sources of oil and grease are mainly anthropogenic. Oil and grease should be contained in or recycled typically to keep them from entering the environment. Toxicity varies among different types of oils and greases. Refined oils are generally more toxic than crude oils. Various hydrocarbons found in fuels can pose a wide range of human health. Okay, so number 11, we have pH. pH as a measure of hydrogen ions concentrations indicates whether the water is acidic or basic. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. Within pH 7 is being the neutral point. Thus, a water of pH 7 is neither acidic nor basic. While water with pH below 7 is acidic and one with a pH above 7 is basic. pH is typically, typically monitored for assessment of aquatic ecosystem, health, recreational waters, irrigation sources, and discharge, livestock, drinking water sources, industrial, industrial discharges it takes, and storm water runoff. The effect of pH on the chemical and biological properties of liquids make its determination very important. In natural waters, pH is governed by the equilibrium between carbon dioxide, bicarbonate, or carbonate ions. It tends to increase during day largely due to the photosynthetic activity or the consumption of carbon dioxide and decreases during nights due to respiratory activity. Next, number 12, we have temperature. Temperature is a measure of the warmness or coldness of the water body. It is an important parameter in water quality assessment because many aquatic organisms are sensitive to changes in water temperature. Water body will naturally show changes in temperature seasonally and daily. However, man-made changes to water temperature will affect fish ability to reproduce. 
Many lake and rivers will exhibit vertical temperature gradients as the sun will warm the upper water while deeper water will remain cooler. Number 13, we have dissolved oxygen solids. When we say total, uh, total dissolved oxygen solids or the TDS, it is a measure of the amount of dissolved waters in the water which consists of inorganic salts and dissolved materials. In natural waters, salts are chemical compounds comprised of an an anions such as carbonates, chlorides, sulfates, and nitrates, and cations such as potassium, sodium, calcium, and magnesium. The concentration of the TDS in the water is expressed in milligrams per liter. In many instances, research agencies use the terms TD TDS and salinity inter Changeably. Since these ions are typically in the form of salts, measuring total dissolved oxygen is a way to estimate the suitability of water for irrigation and drinking. This is an important parameter for drinking water because high TDS values may result in a salty taste to the water. Okay, so number 14, we have total hardness. Hardness is a predominantly caused by the valent cations such as calcium, magnesium, alkaline earths, metals such as iron, magnesium, mag manganese, uh, stand to be corrected po, manganese, strontium, and etc. The total hardness is defined as the sum of calcium and magnesium concentrations, both expressed as CaCO3. Or the, the term itself is the calcium carbonate in, magne in milligram per liter. Carbonates and bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium cause temporary hardness. Sulfates and chlorides cause per permanent hardness. Hardness of water prevents ladder formation with soap rendering the water unsuitable for bathing and washing. It forms scales in, in boilers making it unsuitable for industrial usage. Next, number 15, we have total suspended solids. Suspended solids are particles of sand, silt, and clay, and organic materials including plankton that move with the water. Suspended solids are usually measured as a concentration in milligrams per liter. Suspended solids reduce visibility and absorb light, which can increase the water's temperature and reduce photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. In painting aquatic plants, photosynthesis reduces the amounts of food, habitat, and dissolved oxygen. Water with high suspended solids is unsatisfactory for bathing, industrial, and other purposes. High levels of suspended solids can cause problems for aquatic organisms because it can reduce visibility, thus making it hard for fish to find prey. Number 16, we have transparency. When we have transparency or the sea depth is a measure of how deep the light penetrates into the water column and therefore it is an indication of water clarity. This measurement as an alternative to measuring turbidity is obtained by lowering a black and white sticky disc into the water and recording the depth from the, from the time that it is visible and until it is no longer visible. Transparency is, is directly affected by the level of suspended particles and dissolved materials in the water. When assessed, along with the other parameters such as chlorophyll A, transparency measurements give us useful insight into the biological productivity in a lake and ultimately its water quan quality conditions. And, and I think this, is, this will be the last, the turbidity. Turbidity is a um, significant indicator of, of overall water quality. It is an expression of optical property wherein light is scattered by suspended particles present in water or the Tyndall effect it, and, measure, and is measured by nephilometric turbidity units. Suspended in colloidal, ma colloidal matter such as clay, silt, finely divided organic and or inorganic matter, plankton and other microscopic organisms can cause turbidity in water. 
water that has high turbidity appears cloudy or opaque. High turbidity can cause increased water temperature because suspended particles absorb more heat and can also reduce the amount of light penetrating the water. High levels of turbidity make it difficult for fish to, to find prey due to high levels of suspended solids. Under biological parameters, we have phytoplankton, zooplankton, and benthos. Phytoplankton is also known as algae and it refers to free-floating plants which inhabits the illuminated surface waters of the sea, estuaries, lakes, and ponds. Phytoplanktons are mostly unicellular and their photosynthetic activity in order to reproduce is limited to the maximum depth to which light can penetrate into the water. Phytoplanktons have a critical role, role in prima, primary production, nutrient cycling, and food webs and make up, make up a significant pro, proportion of the primary production in aquatic system. Phytoplanktons are the food source of numerous aquatic animals, especially the zooplankton, which can significantly decrease phytoplankton density. Phytoplankton plankton growth and productivity are affected by several factors which are called limiting factors. These limiting factors include light, temperature, cir circulation, grazing, and nutrients. Second, we have zooplankton. Zooplankton is the common name given to many small species of animals found in fresh and marine waters. Zooplankton is a Greek word which means wandering animals. Most of these animals are so many that they can only be seen using a microscope. Zooplankton floats in, in the water column and drifts with their colors because of their limited powers of locomotion. Like phytoplankton, they are usually denser than water and constantly sink by gravity to lower them. The third we have bentos. We refer to the benthic invertebrate community which is a group of animals that live on or in the bottom sediments of water bodies such as lakes and rivers. Benthic micro invertebrates include crustaceans, mollusks, worms, and many species of insects, insect larvae such as mayflies, stoneflies, cuttleflies, and beetles. The abundance of micro invertebrates belonging to the orders Epimeroptera, Plecoptera, and Trichoptera should be noted because for being highly sensitive to pollution. They are often used as water quality indicators. Their presence indicates as high quality of water while their absence suggests water may be polluted. Benton are, bentos are easier to capture than fish and easier to ident identify than algae or protozoa. Bentos cannot move around like fish that they are less able to escape the effect of sediments and other pollutants that diminish water quality. Thus, bentos can give us reliable, info reliable information on streams and lakes water quality because their long life cycles will allow studies conducted by aquatic ecologists to determine any decline in environmental quality. Okay. Under, under microbiological parameters are total coliform and fecal coliform. Total coliform are the coliform bacteria that are microscopic organisms that originate in the intestinal tract of warm-blooded animals and are also present in soil and vegetation. Total coliform are generally harmless but their presence in water would indicate the possibility of contamination by disease causing bacteria, viruses, and parasites. Most coliform bacteria, bacteria enter natural streams by direct deposition of waste in the water and run off from areas with high con concentration of animals or humans. Sec uh, second, we have uh, fecal coliform. The presence of fecal coliform bacteria in aquatic environments indicates that the water has been contaminated with the fecal material of man or other animals. At the time this occurred, 
The source water may have been contaminated by pathogens or disease producing bacteria or viruses which can also exist in fecal materials. Some waterborne pathogenic disease include typhoid fever, viral and bacterial gastroenteritis and hepatitis A. The presence of fecal contamination is an indicator that a potential health risk exists for individuals exposed to this water. Fecal coliform bacteria may occur in ambient water as a result of the overflow of domestic sewage or non-point air sources of human and animal waste.